Hi, everybody. My name is Azadeh Mokhtadari. I'm the VP of Data Science at Ancestry. Tonight, we're going to talk about product and data science should be best friends. So I'm going to take, take you through why and how through this presentation. So a little bit about me. In my professional career, it's basically broken down into two halves, the academic portion of my career and then the industrial portion. So after graduating my PhD from Queen's University in Canada, I went to a few years of research in academia in France, in the ENS of Lyon, and then back to Queen's University in Canada. After that, I decided to change career path and moved to eBay, moved all the way to California to basically join eBay, and then from there I moved to Ancestry. Throughout these years of experience at eBay and at Ancestry, I had the opportunity to work with many, many different product managers across many different disciplines. And through this, I learned that not only AI and the usage of AI means different things depending on what kind of discipline you work with, but also that depending on the openness and the knowledge of the product manager you're working with, they have a different reception to how the AI should be used in their product. So all of that brought me to tonight where I can share some of those learnings with you across multiple industries and talking to a lot of people on how that experience should be improved. So before I get into the details, I wanted to share a personal story with you. About a year ago, I decided to use Ancestry to discover my husband's family background. Uh, we didn't know really anything about his background at the time. So through this process, I learned that his grandfather, Harry, was born in the UK. He moved to Canada when he was six years old in 1918. He moved with his mom, two siblings, and a stepfather. So through this process, I discover a story that Harry had written about himself. I'm not going to read this story, but basically he goes on and talks about his family. He talks about his stepfather. He talks about how he was at World War I, the trip from UK, the family, and on and on, whether in Canada and the experience. And it's absolutely fascinating. So both my husband and I were really, truly blown away by this story. And when I thought about it, the truth was discovering this story and many other discoveries that I found for my husband's family was not possible if AI team or data science team hadn't collaborated well with, with product management, right? But when I stepped back and thought about it, I realized that these experiences, if we were absolutely best friends in every possible way and had the best partnership ever, which was absolutely flawless, we would have been able to create many, many more of these magical experiences for our customers. So through that process, I thought, well, I have the experience. I know what works and what doesn't. Let me take the journey of going and talking to my product peers and managers and try to work with them to figure out exactly what works and what doesn't and help with them and get the help from them to essentially uh, find the best uh, possible outcome by resolving some of those challenges that we have. So tonight, I'm going to share with you some of the challenges that I've been you know, discovering and, and, uh, and tell you the solution that my partners and I have, have decided to come up with. So I have something that we call push versus pull. So let me explain to you what that means. Imagine you have an organization, and a lot of you might be quite familiar with this model. Then you may have many, many different domains. Let's just say search at eBay could be a domain. Merchandising could be a domain. Marketing is a domain. So every domain has a product manager or a group of product managers associated with it, right? You may actually have, assume for a second that you have the centralized data science function, and you have this embedded model of assigning a few data scientists to each one of these domains for them to be able to work with the guidance of that product manager to be able to come up with uh, you know, ideas and models that they can deploy. So the product manager in charge of every one of those domains owns the backlog, the prioritization, and they go and pull the data science in to ask them for the solution they're looking for. So usually the best working model is the situation of pull because a product manager knows exactly what they want because they own their own road, roadmap and the back, you know, their vision. But on the contrary, you have a different model where data scientists go and observe challenges in the business. It could be a situation when they observe a challenge of the business where there is no product manager associated with it. Or it could be a case where that model would take a year to build. 
and the product manager is not focused on that at that point in time. So, and there are many, many other situations where the data scientists observe opportunities and they solve the problem and then they have to go push it out to the business or product. The challenge, and this is one of the biggest challenges that data science has because people are not very receptive to taking those ideas in. Why? Because the roadmap was different. This is a distraction to it in some ways. And even if this has the biggest possible business impact, people are not absorbing it really well and they don't take it very well. This actually, in fact, is one of the biggest challenges that I experience when I interview leaders of data science. Now, people say one of my biggest challenges is to push ideas out to the business. So what is the solution for that? Imagine that if you have this data science product backlog, everything that data science is doing, whether it is a pull or a push, all goes into this list, right? And then if you were going to assign a product manager dedicated to this backlog, that product manager can actually help with the prioritization to understand the actual business impact of every item. And there are situations where something that data science is trying to push out could take priority over something that product managements were pulling data science in for. So at Ancestry, we are trying to see if we can build this model and see if we can actually succeed in a much better way. But the other thing is, and this is actually a major problem because there are dependencies. And sometimes people don't understand these dependencies. So let me tell you a bit more. Developing and iterating on AI models takes time. There are situations where you have to have a data logged in the front end, and people don't realize that not every company goes and logs absolutely everything, right? So you would have a situation where people want data science to build a model, but data science doesn't even have the data logged in the front end. So you need to have your engineers go plug in everything to start logging data. You then need to have the data collected for historic time in order for a data scientists to go train a model on something that is collected historically. Sometimes they also need label data. They need human beings to go label the data for them. For example, they draw a bounding box around an image you know, for them to have a sample data for them to be able to train a model. So that may take two to three months because you may need to historic information for two to three months. And this is all the prerequisite before data science can even start developing AI models, which may take three to 12 months depending on what kind of model they're training. It might be an iteration. It might be something that is an R&D problem that takes a long time. After the model development, you actually go through this phase of model deployment in production, which may take one to three months depending on the complexity. And then you eventually have to do probably A-B testing to figure out what is actually the incremental value of that model over something else which could be another model. It could be a rule-based thing. It could be something else, whatever that is. So the bottom line is this process is long, right? And then you have to plan ahead, and you need to plan well. So if you're a product manager, and you need and you expect the data scientist to deliver something to you right now, you probably have to think about all the dependencies two to three quarters ahead in order for you to receive what you expect on the right time. I wanted to sort of talk about how you should make data science an integrate part of your planning. There is data everywhere, right? The roadmap you have could potentially change direction based on the insight that is coming to you along the way. So the point is, if you allow data scientists to be an integrated part of your planning, your vision development, everything is going to be so much smoother, right? Because then you don't have these things about asking someone to do something, then they think something else is important, and then everything turns into chaos. Actually, if you do everything together, things are going to be so much easier. So I just wanted to end my presentation by saying that if you work together, if you are absolutely best friends, things could be so much smoother, and we can create many more magical experiences for our customers. With that, I thank you all for listening.